it's me. I'm back. Yes, you'll probably hear a repeat of this when you get to the rest of the film, but that's okay. Anyway, it's Anne, and this is another in the series with Angie of 4F Beauty on Photo Inspiration. Angie has got to be one of my favorite people to watch. She has a wicked sense of humor, loves to teach, and just this series that she curates and came up with the idea, is just, it's remarkable to me. I have met some delightful people from the other collabs that she's done. And this is my fourth round on this. So that means I got to pick the picture again. I usually, yeah, most of the time, the first time somebody's doing a collaboration on this series, Angie, that we get all she gives people a choice, but most of the time they go, know you first. And I did the exact same thing. So when we got to round two, I picked, and then we got to round three, and she picked, and we got to round four, and I picked again. Now, round four, and hopefully the, the, the main part of this particular piece of footage is in black and white, if I remember. But the picture, which I'm going to try to pop onto my hand. The picture this time is from my front garden and it's a bronze iris. I'm going to try to get it pointed right here. We'll, we'll see. Anyway, it was taken with my little phone and it's not the world's best picture, but I love that flower. The bronze iris is absolutely gorgeous. It really is. And I'm hoping I did it justice. I'm hoping. I can't wait to see what Angie did. When you get finished watching this, if you haven't seen Angie's, go see it. If you're from Angie's channel, hi, hang around if you like. Now, let's get into the good stuff. Hello. Yes, it's me. It's Anne. Hi, I'm back. Yes, I've rearranged the wall, but then again, I rearranged my entire room. So, yeah, things are a little different looking. I still have to work out exactly how I want the back behind me to look. We'll see what happens as we go along. Anyway. Oh, I'm going to be working on, which I probably should have, would have said something about in the black and white intro, um, that what I'm working on today is a collaboration with 4F Beauty. It's one of the photo inspiration series. It was my turn, since this is round four, it was my turn to pick a picture, and what I picked is a bronze iris that's in my front garden. Now, the picture will appear on one side or the other, but Angie and I are going to each be doing our own take on the bronze iris picture. And hopefully, I will do the thing justice. The, 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 the picture doesn't entirely do the bronze iris justice itself. But this is one of the most fun collaboration series I have ever been involved in. And it's just... Angie is a hoot to start with. She really is. She's smart. She's funny. She, 
I think we would probably definitely raise an eyebrow or two at the pub if we ever got together and went out for a beer somewhere. Um, actually, that would be fun if we could manage to somehow meet in the middle somewhere and, and work together in the same room at some time. That would be an absolute delight. However, I'm hoping that what I do is true to the picture, but different than what Angie comes up with. Now that usually happens. Sometimes they get very close, but it usually happens that there's some subtle differences. And I'm hoping that we keep that up. Now, trying to make sure Yes, I keep looking over at my monitor. Yes, my monitor is still on the side. So, now, I have washed my face. It has been moisturized. It's been allowed to set in. Yes, that thing is still there, but it is clearing up. I have a new CPAP mask strap system, so... Hopefully it'll clear up quicker. Yes, I really could use a haircut because it's getting shaggy in the sides. But I haven't got there. In the meantime, I'm going to get started. Now, Angie and I have some similarities when it comes to our eye shapes and stuff in that her deep set eyes and my hooded eyes run into some of the same problems. My hooded eyes, because of the way they fold, I get transfer of shimmers between the upper lid and the lower lid on this portion. And where I've got the natural crease, if I put standard technique makeup in that natural crease you'll never see it because my eyes fold over themselves that upper static lid has enough flexibility that it just rolls down over top of the mobile lid when the mobile lid moves up. It's kind of like a Roman shade. If you've ever seen a Roman shade, you've seen the way they kind of fold and pile up on each other as they go up. That's kind of what I'm working with. Had a little bit of the beige base still on the brush and it darkened up the top of this eye a little bit more than I wanted. Yes, I need to wash this brush. Sorry. Anyway, like I said, moisturized, washed, moisturized, all ready to go. Now, it's still hot weather here. I'm in a northern elevation in the U.S. in the southeastern part of Oregon. 
Now, we are we are starting to get cool nights already, even this, you know, middle of August. We get cool nights partially because we're in a desert situation. It's called high desert, we're at the edge of the mountains. So, we can get sometimes a 30 degree drop between the daytime heat and the evening cool. At this point in the day, though, we have daytime heat. Yes. Lots of it. Heat, 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 heat. And I do not officially have an air conditioner. What I have is an older house that has lots and lots of cross ventilation windows and I have several fans. Now, I'm going to try to adjust the sound once I'm in edit to try to knock out some fan noises because there's the fan noise from the window fan and there's some fan noise from my computer. Normally, just dropping the noise from the computer is enough to get most of the extraneous noise gone. Now, I'm going to be talking about what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, but I'm not going to be talking that much about the brands or any of that kind of thing with the makeup. It's not required that you use a particular brand of makeup. Use what you have. Look for your colors, but use what you have. Now, I'm going to start with a little bit of a dark color because I'm going to start out here. And I'm going to start with something that's close. This is a matte. Starting with something that's close to the color of that bronze iris. And I'm just going to start shaping. Now, because I have small eyes and they're hooded, I'm putting right here is where my natural crease runs. So I'm going above that because otherwise when I open my eyes that natural crease is folded over top of by that upper lid and you're not going to see anything. I'm using a kind of red-brown, again this is a matte, because the bronze iris has got kind of a red-brown base on the petals, or if you want to get picky, you can call them bracts. And they are absolutely gorgeous. They look like bronze velvet. Like I said, the picture doesn't do complete justice to these flowers. I love iris. I really do. I think they're absolutely delightful. Now, one of the rules about the pictures 
and doing the photo inspiration is that you can use any color that is in the picture. You can. Any color in the picture. But, you cannot add any colors. You have to stick to the colors in the picture. Now, in this rather amazing image, we have, yes, I have that over here on the monitor too. We have the bronze bracket. If you get way down close, you can almost see the, the yellow pollen stamens in the center of the leaves. You've got browns down in the mulch, and you've got beigey tans, and you've got some bright greens and some dark greens, and several different shades of gray from the stones. And, you know, there's a lot of options. You cannot add colors. You have to stick to the colors in the picture. However, you don't have to use every color in the picture, which comes in handy because there's a lot of colors in this picture you can choose from. Now, let's see where I'm going to go Let me look. I think I do. Now and again, anyway, I'm actually going to pick up some of the gray from the stones and take that to the inner corner. and towards the center of the eye. Because I've got that gorgeous blue-gray stone that my husband found that's right below that flower. That's a rock from the local branch of the Powder River that we have that runs through our little town. Just going to carry this on both sides. Back this way a bit. It's like, I was born and raised in the Shenandoah, in Shenandoah Valley, and that's at about the 38th parallel. We're at about the 45th parallel here. I'm still trying to get used to the difference in length of summer and such. Now, I 
believe I've got a really good green that I'm going to use, but I'm going to use that under the eye rather than on the main lid. I'm going to pick up something that's just a little more sparkle to go in that center between the gray and the matte color. Start bringing a little spark in here. And I'm going to actually use a couple of colors to kind of because this one is a bit pinky. So I'm going to add something that's got a bit more brown to it, to the sparkle. Yes, sparkle. Better known as a shimmer or a satin or... It all kind of depends on where you were raised and what forms you were taught for what you're going to call it. I have yet to hear it. too many people all use the exact same phrase for what these things are. Do the same thing again over here with that same original color with the pinky in it and then pick up this kind of coppery shimmer over here and lay in over that pink. And then work that into the mat a bit so that we get closer to that absolutely glorious red tinged bronze that is in that flower petal. dearly love that bronze iris. Right now, it's looking pretty sharp for how I've got it laid down. So I'm going to pick up the other brush again and play with that gray tone some more. And see if I can't ease up that delineation. Now granted, in the picture, there's no real blending. It's like where the rock is, is pretty sharp compared to where the flower starts. On my eyes, it looks a little harsh. So we're going to fiddle with it a bit and see if we can't soften it up just a tad. I 
Okay. Now, like I said, we've got a bunch of colors in here that we can play with. We really do. Including that very yellowy green from one of the newer plants that's coming up. But I'm going to start with the kind of I'm going to mix a couple of little colors here. I've got two different shades of green to try to do the green from the stem and the leaves on that flower. I've got a kind of dusty olive and one with just a little shimmer to it that I'm kind of mixing up here on the palette. Pick up a little of each. Just a tad. Am I starting to sound like Bob Ross? I'm getting scared. And yes, I'm carrying it up just a little bit on the side. Because it's kind of the shape of the leaf. Just going right up along there. Is it perfect? Nah. I don't do perfect. Perfect. Perfect doesn't happen often. Yes, I was smiling at my husband. He's trying to hand me things. Now with that bright green, it's down in the bottom right corner, well, depending on how you're looking at it. Anyway, there's a bright green along the bottom edge from another plant that's sticking its nose in just a little. And I've got a bright green that I'm going to put right here, just tagging along. Just tagging What I'm going to do now is stop the film for a few minutes. I'll go and comb the curls out, take all the pins out of my hair, and put a little foundation and such on, and I'll be back.
I'm back. There we go. Finished look. Now, I did go back in a little bit and I used a slightly darker gray that's closer to one of the other stones because where it had mixed, it was going very pink. And I'm going, mm, yeah, no, not pink. And again, I didn't have anything that was like a specifically bronze shade in my lipsticks. So I kind of mixed together a couple of things. Should have put my earrings on, but hey, you know. Anyway, I can't wait to see what Angie has done. This is, like I said, one of my favorite, absolute favorite series. It really is. And as long as Angie is willing to keep curating the series and lets me come play, I am going to keep volunteering for another round. This time it'll be her, the next time it'll be her turn to pick again. That could be interesting. She usually has some really nifty pictures that people have sent to her from other places and all manner of stuff like that. Anyway, tell me what you think. Tell Angie what you think. Go watch Angie. If you're another creator, Go volunteer. This is a wonderful series. If you feel challenged to attempt a look from that picture, let us know. Tag us. We want to know. We want to see. We're curious. As ever, be good.